Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. Today we are going to look at the uh, Danish uh, beer train from Märklin. Um, the beer train is actually a, a locomotive and then uh, some uh, deep well uh, flat cars uh, with uh, semi-trailers in two versions. Um, if you see here I tried to buy a tree of each uh, version of the cars but I couldn't find that. Uh, unfortunately they were sold out at my Model Train dealer. So then I got this one instead, uh, which actually has uh, another two in here, uh, cars that match uh, with the beer train, plus some extras. Let's um, look at what we have. So the um, locomotive we have here is uh, Merklin 37856 which is a uh, Baureihe 185, actually 185.2, which is a Trax 2 from Bombardier. Um, this is a Scandinavian locomotive, which you will see running in uh, Germany, Sweden, and uh, Denmark. Let's uh, unwrap this one. And you can see here the 185. So far it looks nice. Let's try and Get it more out of the box. Yeah, lots of packaging, which is good. All right. Oops. See one of the pantographs are open. Just press that one down again. All right, so here we have the engine. And as you can see, it's a Deutsche Bahn Schenker, uh, which is actually a Deutsche Bahn uh, Schenker from, if you look here, you see it's a Schenker Rail Scandinavia, which is actually a joint venture between uh, uh, German uh, DB Schenker and uh, Green Cargo, which is Swedish. And you see the locomotive looks really nice. Awesome. Let's put it to the side. Then we have uh, here a Tuborg uh, car, freight car, uh, for Märklin 47113. Let's uh, unwrap this one. What we see in here is a flat car. That's actually uh, quite heavy. So this is a deep well car for transporting semi-trailers. Looks really, really nice. Then uh, we also got a matching semi-trailer. Oh, it's stuck in there. Cool. Then we can mount on the car. Awesome. Nice details. We got the uh, Carlsberg version as well which is a uh, Märklin 47112. And as we can see, same type of car, same type of semi trailer, where it just says uh, Carlsberg instead of Tuborg. Cool. Now let's uh, look at the last box. Uh, so where the two first ones actually uh, was originally uh, made uh, to fit with the locomotive. Uh, this one is an additional one that came out uh, later, actually this year. So Macklin 47109. And then you, you can see it has the same Carlsberg in here, plus uh, a bonus uh, 
container wagon. Let's try and open this one. And it looks like we got uh, two boxes in here. All right. The first box here. Four seven one zero nine dash one. Look like the Carlsberg are just unwrapped. Awesome. Let's uh, look at the second car in here. So that's this one here. So four seven one zero nine dash two. Cool. So this is a container wagon where the other ones were semi trailer. Truck semi trailer transports. Let's try and check this one out. Yeah, it's a lot longer than the uh, other ones. Looks very nice though. There's even some detailed piping and so on to the underbody. Let me turn it around. Yeah. Looks nice. And then we got uh, two, well, it's actually not containers because you can see they got these uh, ones here that can be flipped out. They are actually, uh, I think they call it interchangeable modules for uh, trucks. So this one can be mounted directly on a truck. Cool. Got another one here. So this is uh, the bonus wagon. If I compare to what was originally uh, designed uh, for the beer train consist. Awesome. Let's uh, put it on the track. All right, let's have a look at the prototype. Um, so the uh, locomotive that's modeled here is actually a 185.327, uh, which is a class uh, 185.2. Uh, and it's modeled as it looked in 2017, 2018. Um, I actually looked at uh, some of the pictures I found on the internet and indeed uh, it does look like that. I didn't look at all the details, but overall it, it looks uh, like the pictures including, uh, by the way, the uh, yellow warning stripes uh, on the front. Um, do note that in 2019 it was changed um, to uh, more Werksrot, so it doesn't have the silver doors, uh, but it still has the yellow warning colors. So it's a, a locomotive from uh, Deutsche Bahn uh, Schenker uh, Rail Scandinavia, uh, which is actually a joint project uh, between uh, DB uh, Schenker Rail Germany and uh, Swedish Green Cargo. Uh, it has formerly been called uh, Railian Scandinavia. So the locomotive is a Bombardier Trax 2. Uh, the Trax 2 is actually an evolution of the original Trax model, uh, which is also the uh, class 185. Uh, and by the way, it was followed by a Trax 3. Uh, in particular, this is um, uh, F140 AC2, so that's the type number. Uh, there was uh, 393 built of those from 2004 to 2015. And uh, pretty much half of those were made for Deutsche Bahn uh, cargo. Uh, currently there's actually uh, 20 of these that belongs to the DB Schenker Rail Scandinavia. Uh, as I understand it, originally there was uh, 23, so a couple uh, disappeared. Looking at the type number, the F140 stands for freight, 140 is the uh, top speed, AC2 uh, means that it's dual voltage uh, AC version, so in this case uh, 15 kilovolts and 25 kilovolts. Um, the um, locomotive is uh, most often seen in Denmark uh, and Sweden, but you will also find it in uh, northern Germany as well. If we look at the first freight car, it's uh, class SDG MNS 33, uh, typically also called a T3. 
Uh, this is um, often denominated a uh, deep well uh, flat uh, freight car or in German a uh, Taschenwagen. Um, this one is uh, purpose built actually for semi truck trailers, uh, which is also what we find in, uh, in this uh, model. Um, however, it is uh, actually a multi purpose uh, freight car and can be used for containers and interchangeable uh, truckloads as well. Uh, however, as I understand it, uh, it's not uh, very efficient for uh, containers, although it do up to 60 foot containers, uh, it will actually uh, add additional length to the containers and uh, purpose built container wagons are actually better for it. Uh, for the interchangeable uh, truckload, uh, it's uh, really good for this one because it actually has a max uh, loading capacity that's uh, pretty high, which is uh, 69 tons. Uh, so what you often see it for is uh, used for is the semi truck trailers and then uh, on occasion the interchangeable uh, truck loads. The uh, max speed of the uh, freight car is 140 kilometers an hour. Um, this particular one uh, that's modeled you'll typically see uh, uh, in Denmark, Sweden and northern uh, Germany. However, you will actually find these uh, all over Europe. Uh, the only reason you would see this one particularly here is that it's uh, leased out uh, to that area. The uh, freight cars are modeled uh, as they looked in uh, 2013 and uh, 2020. Uh, so for the two uh, from the 47112 and 47113, that's how they looked in 2013. And for the uh, ones from the 47109 is as they looked in uh, 2020. The uh, other uh, freight car, which was actually uh, the bonus uh, and not originally uh, part of the beer train, but I got it as part of the uh, 47109 set, is the uh, class uh, SGNS uh, 691, which is actually a container flat car, uh, which is used uh, for containers and interchangeable uh, truckloads as well. Uh, I actually didn't find too much information about this one, but I did actually see that it, uh, um, that the top speed, if you uh, zoom in on the, in the small printing on the freight, freight car, you can see the top speed is uh, 100 kilometers an hour as the other freight car. And uh, this particular one you would uh, see in Denmark, Sweden and northern uh, Germany, but you could also find it all over Europe. And this particular freight car is modeled as it looked in 2020. Now let's uh, have a look at the locomotive. It has a decent amount of uh, details um, and I like the fact that they even remember the uh, yellow warning stripes uh, on the front and you actually uh, uh, see that on the locomotive as well, uh, even today when it's uh, been uh, repainted. Um, so uh, nice detail. Uh, all in all, it's technically also a, a solid model. It has MFX, uh, MFX Plus actually, DCC, Macklin, LED lights, uh, centrally mounted uh, maintenance-free engine, and so on. Um, actually, uh, according to the instructions, you can even uh, change the power uh, from the track to the, uh, to the pantographs as well. Although, as I understand it, that's not really um, recommended when you're doing uh, digital operations. Um, it has uh, 15 uh, sound and uh, light functions, uh, which is uh, also uh, nice. So uh, let's uh, try that out. So here we have the headlights. It can uh, change uh, with the direction as well. So here we got the red ones. Uh, let's try and turn the engine sound on. Of course, there's uh, horns. Uh, 
uh, two different kinds. Um, there's uh, various uh, sound effects. I believe that was the uh, coupling sound. Letting off steam or air, I guess. The blower. There is also a station announcement. Although I find it funny, they call it a station announcement. In Danish, it's actually saying, uh, please don't uh, cross the uh, tracks. A uh, train is arriving. So uh, in total, there is uh, 15 functions. So I would uh, say uh, decent. Let's uh, try and turn the engine off again. All right, I like it. When I examined the box uh, further, there's actually a set of instructions in there that tells you uh, how to um, how to assemble everything. So if we look here, there's instructions. Oh, have to get out. Okay. So these instructions here. Uh, tell you how to uh, how to mount uh, the uh, semi trailer and or containers on the um, on the freight car. So if we look through this one here, uh, first here are some requirements for uh, what needs to um, be the case in order to uh, mount the semi truck. So um, the uh, semi truck uh, rig that's already uh, supplied in the uh, box uh, fulfills this. But I guess this is uh, if you want to mount other trucks and or containers. Okay. Um, you can see what's especially interesting here is when you put it into the well in, in the flat car. Here at the back, there mustn't be anything that actually uh, scrapes and if uh, your semi trail already have some kind of thingy here you may need to uh, remove that one as well it talks about here that uh, in the wells these here to hold the wheels can be moved uh, back and forth i did find though that uh, when you uh, just use whatever is in the box then uh, everything actually already fit out of the box. It talks about here uh, that there's actually three different things you can mount uh, to hold the uh, semi trailer. Okay. It uh, talks about how you mount it and then you need to adjust the item you put on and then you can adjust around the wheels as well here in the wheel well. Okay, and the final thing here is uh, how to put a container on there. Then you basically need these small tabs and you need to mount them the proper places. And then you can actually uh, mount a container as well. So let's look at that. Cool, so we got the wagon here. Um, here we got the, the well here where the, uh, where the semi trailer will go in. You can see these ones here, you can actually move backwards and forwards. These ones here, this one is more static. Um, so when you move those backwards and forwards, you can make it fit with other cars. However, what I did find was, let me try and just take this one out, that if I just Put these ones in here, it actually fit. So what's supplied in the box fits out of the box. But as you see here in the front, there's uh, something missing there. Well, if you don't do anything, it will just fall down. 
but if you need it flat, then you can see or, or level, then there's something missing. Of course, you could also just drive around like this where it's tilting a little forward, but we could also mount the item and we find those here in the box, the little peg that needs to be there. So here are the three pegs to hold the semi-trailer. Here are the um, small brackets if you're going to put a container on there. I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to put the semi-trailer on. So let's try and unpack these. We need a scissor to get them out. All right. Then we get three little items here. Let me just take, pick them up. So this one here, it'll actually go in like this. Okay. I get this one here. Okay, I'm guessing this uh, fits uh, different kind of uh, semi-trailers. Oh, I'm missing one. Where's the last one? Yep, I dropped it. So this is actually the one I found that fits uh, with the semi-trailer. So you can either choose to just having the semi-trailer hanging a little, or you could put this one in. So if you look at the freight car here, so we got the well over here with the movable parts. You see there's kind of a rail here. This is where you can put this one in. Let me see if I can do it on camera. So you see it kind of has two thingies here. You can put it in the rail. So you put it in a little crooked and then you can just basically turn it. And now you see it's in there. And now you can slide it backwards and forwards. I found that the uh, it needs to sit around here. So you see there's a couple of cylinders here. So the hole needs to be approximately where those cylinders are. Now, if we mount the car again, you can see then it actually fits here and basically just holds it up. So um, the peg here on the semi-trailer actually doesn't go into you see that it looks like it has a hole, but it actually doesn't fit in there. I didn't see you could take the peg out either, uh, as was kind of illustrated in the drawing. So it kind of just goes in there and fits like this. So um, for this car as well, uh, when I examined it um, further, there was actually uh, instruction in there. When I did the unboxing before, it was actually in the lid. So if you just open here and you saw, I just took the uh, flamingo up before, but if you just leave the flamingo out, there's actually also a set of instructions uh, for this car. Um, and what is important here is that uh, you see um, for the uh, unit, interchangeable transport unit you want to put on the car, you can take these on and off, these stilts here, and they could be bent up. And to me, it seems like, yeah, okay. It seems like we need to uh, put it in the holes here and then you can take it off and put the stilts out. All right. So if we uh, examine the car, we have the car here and the, uh, trick is to get the little interchangeable units into these yellow holes here. Let's just take uh, one of these. So here's one of the units and you can see there's some pegs there. See, Whoa. there's my finger here. There's a peg here. There's a peg up here as well. So that's one in each corner. Okay, these pegs there. So you basically need to align those with the holes. So let's try that. And it seems like you kind of need to be kind of at the end of the car. 
it seems like around here they align yes so you see now it's aligned so it's actually the uh, hole furthest to the end uh, towards the end of the car and when it's here then it is actually firmly attached well not when you're tilting it and so on and touching it but uh, when the train is running around on the tracks it is firmly attached here see you can even tilt it some all right so that's how you uh, put the uh, intermodal unit on let's do a um, slow uh, drive-by <clears throat> so we can admire the details of the uh, engine and the cars so first here we got the uh, locomotive and as you can see finely detailed nice print on there everything looks uh, crisp and clear so the locomotive the frame itself is actually fray a metal but the body is uh, plastic but it's uh, metal so it actually uh, runs really 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 nice then we have the uh, Carlsberg uh, freight car here which is uh, by itself so in the box by itself um, and then the Tuborg is coming afterwards uh, for these cars uh, they are actually also in metal so actually really heavy runs uh, really nice and they, they really roll nice um, the semi trailers on top are made out of plastic um, but it doesn't matter because uh, it's, it's really good uh, quality uh, freight car then comes the uh, set here where there's a Carlsberg that's similar to the uh, two uh, previous cars um, so uh, same good uh, running characteristics and then finally uh, with the set with the Carlsberg and uh, the container wagon here is the um, intermodal um, units that you can put on uh, trucks as well this one is uh, also metal uh, also runs really nice uh, feels really heavy uh, in the hand so I would say uh, all in all all pieces uh, of this consist, uh, both the original ones that fit with it, the first two bore uh, and Carlsberg uh, freight cars, plus the last set here I uh, purchased, the Carlsberg uh, with the semi trailer, and here at the end the intermodal. All of them are really, really good and nice quality. I like it.
So what do I think about this uh, Danish uh, beer train? Well, first of all, I really, really like the uh, beer theme. It's a theme that seems to follow many Märklin enthusiasts. I definitely got more than a few uh, beer cars. Um, latest count was about uh, 62 beer cars, including these ones though. Um, so uh, beer cars are very uh, popular. Um, all in all, I will say uh, the uh, locomotive and the freight cars and, and the semi-trailers uh, and so on uh, was really, really nice. It's detailed, there's fine print on there as well, so overall uh, looking uh, pretty nice. Uh, what I really liked was uh, the um, metal frame. Uh, both the locomotive and the cars have metal frame, which make them uh, um, heavy, uh, good, and generally gives uh, good uh, running characteristics, uh, smooth runners. Uh, all in all, I would say the locomotive has the expected features, MFX+, Plus, uh, DCC, Märklin. It's a low maintenance uh, uh, engine, uh, actually I should say a maintenance-free engine that's silent, it's got uh, traction tires on each boogie and so on. So it's actually what you would expect of features of a decent uh, Märklin locomotive. Um, it also has a, a decent sound that delivers uh, what is needed. A little unsure, I think I hear a little crackling here and there, but it's not really dominant. So overall, I would say the uh, locomotive is, is a good uh, Macklin quality. It's uh, not something that uh, completely wows, but generally a good, decent uh, quality. All in all, I would say I really like this contest. Beer, metal and nice. I really uh, hope you uh, liked this video and would consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you do subscribe, please uh, remember to hit the little bell button so you'll get notifications when uh, videos pop up on the channel. And don't forget to hit the like button. Enjoy!